Hi, Christy. Okay, here we go. Originally from to what country did you move? I am. Um, I'm originally from the states. So I was born in California, in America, and then I moved to China. I went to the country Japan, pre, uh, island Kyushu, prefecture Oita, Hita, uh, city Hita, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. I was originally from Shreveport, Louisiana, and when I was four years old, my family moved to the Philippines, and we lived in a place called Baguio City. I am from the U.S. I grew up in Minnesota, and I moved to China a year out of college. I grew up in China, and I moved to the States in year 2014. In your opinion, did traveling to another country improve your life, and why? Yes, it did, it did improve my life. It widened my view of other cultures, as well as showed me I still have a lot to learn socially, such as like being quiet more and letting other people talk. I think being in China definitely improved my view of God and the work that we were supposed to be doing and kind of like gave me a better social and emotional sense of where I was in the world and that this world is temporary and that we're moving on. I feel like if I grew up in the States I might have had less of that especially because it would have been such a stable and like consistent lifestyle that I would have just like looked for worldly goals instead of going through the hardships to discover spiritual goals. Traveling to another country did improve my life. I was exposed to a different media and society with a very different worldview. These different voices from two countries helped me to see the world from more perspectives, which most of the times explains a lot more than just listening from just one side of the story. It's very interesting and different. Did traveling to the new school establishment or country improve your academic grades? Traveling to a new school, it definitely did because in China and especially in Asian countries, we're very like academically oriented, whereas in the States, like different characteristics and things are more valued than others. So I definitely feel like being in China made me more like academically like strong and it made me want to pursue excellence, especially academically because everyone around me was so pressured by their parents or pressured by like wanting to have a good future to pursue their academics that their like kind of like effort and the system of my school definitely like shaped me into that kind of a person. Well, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that since I grew up in China, I'm more wired to improve through competition and comparison with peers. Right before I left China, I was among the top 10 stu students from my grade, which at that point I don't really feel encouraged to improve further. Coming to the States, however, gave me a new start where I had to improve from scratch, pretty much, since people learn different things in a different language. And it was a great struggle and it took a lot of effort to have a decent grade. No, in the sense that if I compare my academic achievement parallel to that of what I would have achieved if I didn't leave China, the achievement if I didn't leave China would have looked a lot more impressive. What was the most prominent difference in the new school that you traveled to? Please explain. Each year was different, but averagely 80 to 90 percent of my students were non-native speakers. Some were fluent in English because they'd been in the system a long time. Others were clearly, clearly ESL students. Finally, although all the parents within the system wanted their children to speak fluent American English, the students did not necessarily feel that way. They had a desire to fit in, but not to fit into the American way. In fact, it was op um, often the opposite. They wanted to still prove that they fit in their native culture. Um, when I moved from China to the States, definitely the biggest difference was academia. So in China and in the Asian community especially, like academia and being like smart and having a high GPA and good grades is like the most important thing there. Whereas in the States, it's like you can kind of do what you want and then a lot of students are studious because they know what they want and they know that they need to study in order to get there. But like I've definitely experienced like this new like social aspect of like 
having like a lot of friends and like going out during the day or on school nights and stuff like that, things I've never really like done back in China. One of the big differences in the school that I attended overseas uh, was that it was made up of a lot of international students as well as about half the students were Filipinos. And then another big difference is that the school was a combination day school and boarding school. So about 30% um, of the students lived in dorms on campus and beginning in my fifth grade I had some um, classmates that were boarders. They lived in the dorm. Uh, because their families lived in another city, uh, either in the Philippines or somewhere else, and didn't have a school in English where they lived. In China, I was from a public school, which in many ways is very different from American homeschooling. I could go on for an hour on this topic, but here's three main differences. The first one, grading system. American schools grade based on GPA, which includes all schoolwork, homeworks, tests, projects, etc. Chinese schools, however, evaluate academic achievement based more on tests, which means that even if you failed all the homework assignments, but managed to get all A's on tests, you would still appear to be a good student, although it's quite impossible to do that. Secondly, the school social life. In China, you spend roughly 11 to 14 hours a day with the same 30 to 50 people in your class, except on week weekends. Some students even live on campus if they had student dorms. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of time for socialing. Then there's homeschooling, where most of the time I'm just at home doing homework or other stuff. There are occasional parties, and my homeschool organization is almost like a private school. But still, the social time is tiny compared to the social time I had in China, Chinese schools. Thirdly, I'm not going to give another long one, but here's one for fun. American schools don't wear uniforms, but Chinese schools do. And the fun fact is that Chinese students think that their uniforms are absolutely ugly. But one time I wore mine to show to American students, and they loved it. Weird. Uh, which school system did you prefer, and why? I prefer the Japanese school system. They seem to focus more on academics and have a wide variety of clubs, as well as encouraging students to have a full school life. The environment of, this, of the schools that I went to, I went to a daycare, elementary, and a high school. So the, the environment of the schools that I went to were all a combination of being welcoming and also being really serious and focused. I definitely enjoyed the school that I attended in the Philippines. It was uh, pretty challenging as far as academics. The school was considered a college preparatory school, and so the classes we took were um, challenging, preparing us for college either in the United States or in the Philippines. I'd say that I prefer the system in Asia, just because I always like to strive for an element of excellence, so I really like being, sorry I thought I heard someone, I really enjoy being excellent at something, especially like studying, whether I'm interested in, interested in it or not, I just enjoy being able to comprehend the material and know all of it, and so I probably appreciate the system in China a little better, I think. Now, I'll be specific on answering this question. You asked the school system and not educational content. And thus, I prefer the Chinese school system more because it actually encourages academic cooperation and academic improvement through its frequent ranking. Um, every test in China is ranked, and there are weekly, monthly, and quarterly tests. Every student's mindset is not on competing with other classmates but they compete with other classes, which is where cooperation comes from. Um, however, by comparing with other classmates, the students can also realize how much more they need to uh, improve so that the whole entire class improves, and the better students can know who needs help in the class. It's like everybody rowing the same boat versus homeschooling where everybody is rowing their own boats. Do you think that your international travel had an effect on the, on the degree that you chose in college? Um, my international travel, I chose computer science as my degree. I don't think it made, 
You know, probably traveling and growing up overseas has made a larger impact on my life than I'll ever know, and subconsciously, maybe that was the reason I chose computer science, but my logic behind that was that it's a very practical major, and that coming into the States, I knew that it would be an advantage that I was a female engineer, and that I was um, in computer science opposed to other majors. So I don't think, like directly, I can't find any connections between my international like experience and computer science, but I know that being the person that I am, growing up overseas and my worldview, and knowing that I want to do something that glorifies God, I could find a lot of correlations to computer science in that. Um, Probably the school I attended didn't have that much of an influence on my major in college. I majored in mechanical engineering and I came back to the U.S. to uh, study. I went to Rice University here in Houston where I live now. Um, mostly I enjoyed and did well in math and science classes and so that's why I chose engineering. International travel definitely had an effect on the degree that I would choose in college. Um, the major I chose was inspired by my biology teacher in the States and what I learned about um, my degree in the States. So it really didn't have too much to do with China. What are three things that you learned about the world through your experiences and how will this affect how you choose to live your life in the future? So the first one, one example, one thing is that that I learned is that the world isn't just black and white, but some shades are definitely similar, even with the Pacific in the way. The second thing is that I shouldn't worry about trying new things, even if they contain raw octopus. You, you won't die, trust me. That I learned about the world. One, I learned that the world is completely temporary and that we have a future like in Christ and that our life is eternal, but that for now we just have to try and share the gospel, we have to be God's light and we have to be God's love in the world. Um, the second thing is that there are so many things that I will never and just don't know. I think being an international person has really helped me experience different cultures and realize the depth behind like everything that I go through. Um, and the third thing that I've learned, I'm going to say that it's really not all about me. So meeting a bunch of people and being able to love on them and having the ex opportunities to interact with other people that God has put in my life, I've realized that God didn't put me in their lives so that I could be glorified, but so that he could be glorified and so that I could love on them. And how that affects my life is that I choose not to only think about myself and I choose not to orient my entire life and my plans around what I want to do in a selfish matter. I, God definitely wants what is best for us, but we have to be able to understand that what he wants for us is different than what we may initially want. Some different things that I learned uh, about the world through my experiences. Um, I learned that uh, being an American is a great privilege. I knew that I was blessed to be an American, have parents who were educated and were able to travel overseas to work. Uh, compared to a middle class uh, person in the Philippines, I was um, definitely from a well-to-do family, even though in the U.S our family would have been considered middle class also. But just the uh, salary that my parents received was much higher than what a middle class Philippine family would have lived on. Three things I learned. Number one, I learned about different holidays and I learned how to take those holidays on as my own. I learned that the American way is not always right. And I learned that home is not necessarily your passport country or even the country where you grew up. Um, rather, it's where you're living now. So home can change. Um, it's where your immediate family is. If you're a younger student, it's where mom and dad and siblings are. If you're an adult like me, it's where your spouse and your children are. Um, take my words with a grain of salt. Um, it has a lot of context, but here it goes. 
The first one, the world is not fair. Cope with it and don't expect too much. Secondly, the world is not fair because something's wrong, and if I try to fix it, I must keep in mind not to expect too much. Thirdly, humans always make some mistakes, and history repeats itself. Forgive and receive forgiveness. Something about the new culture that you visited that you would like to see as a part of your own culture? Oh, definitely in the states, people are very good at like small talk and like, but. And some people think that small talk is a really bad thing, and other times, it, I think it can be a good thing because it kind of shows that the overall culture here is like being polite and trying to, you know, like care for one another, even if it comes off as a little shallow at times. I think that it definitely like expresses a little bit that Americans do want to care about each other. So I definitely think that that's something that、um, I would like to see in China a little more. Is maybe even though they like mean it when they do other actions, that they would make it more apparent in like the way that they interact with each other, that they truly do love and care for each other. Because outward affection isn't like that big in China. I really like how the Japanese show respect. Something that I noticed was that the Japanese tend tend to. Like are really good at showing respect, but aren't so good at expressing their love. And Americans are the opposite. You know, everyone in school is like, "Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you." But and then everyone always has trouble with showing respect. Some people say yeah, "ma'am" and "sir," but don't see that as respectful and instead see it as disrespectful. In Japan, they bow in respect, but they don't have enough words in their language to communicate their love. And、um, I wish. Both of our both our, our culture and their culture would learn from each other that they could learn how to express their love more naturally and that how we could learn how to show respect better not just in bowing because in our culture bowing is more of a sign of worship but instead finding some other way to show and accept respect towards one another. Parts of the American Christian culture I find to be very helpful and healthy. That's something I really like to be part of my own culture as an individual and for China. Do you think it's crucial to know more than one culture to survive in our global war- world, or can you get away with just one? Yes, I definitely think that. Well, actually, it depends on where you are. If you're going to stay in the states for the rest of your life, I think that you don't really need more cultures. Even though, although, no, I take it back. I think that it is crucial to know more than one culture, because even if you're just in the states, there are.、Um, Chances are you'll work for a business that works internationally or has people who are from international cultures, and not knowing their culture, it's not important whether you offend or don't offend them. But it's important that you understand them as a person if you want to be relational and if you want to get to know them. If you want a better work environment, I feel like that's important. I think it's absolutely crucial to know more than one culture to survive in our global world. Knowing only one culture often leads to ignorance and misunderstanding in global setting, which I have personally experienced. And people with limited cultural knowledge can't properly receive or contribute to the global community. Why do you think that learning about this culture will be important for a future generation involving politics, foreign affairs, the economy, and how to solve the problems going on in the world today? I definitely think that, regardless of what kind of culture you want to learn about, or whether you should learn about Chinese culture or not, it is important to know at least one other culture, because it definitely helps embrace, helps your mind embrace different possibilities and different things that go around the world, and it doesn't keep you so monotonous. It doesn't, you don't look at one thing and only see it one way all the time, like socially or in any kind of other circumstance. China specifically is extremely involved in like politics and a lot of international business. So if you ever go into that, I think it would be important to know.、Um, although you may not see Chinese people every day in your life, there are definitely people who come from that heritage or who have that kind of influence. And especially for Chinese people. They know that you love and respect them if you love and respect their culture as well. That's one thing about China. But aside from relational things, I definitely feel like it's just good to know some of the good or larger、um, 
social and economic powers in this world and that China is definitely involved in a lot of the wars or a lot of like just the relationships between the big countries that go on. Coming to the States is a very eye-opening experience for me and it taught me many things that I wouldn't know if I was in China. Um, it really contributed to my worldview and values that I have today and which will certainly direct what my actions will be in the future. And I think um, that's the reason why learning about the culture, the American culture will be important for um, our future generation involved in politics, foreign affairs, the economy, and how to solve problems. Bye.